Hello everybody and welcome back once more to Monster Road Trip. I am the Outback App. I'm Yin and Young. I'm Chibi New. And I'm Taryn Cosplay. And we're gonna get back to, um, you know, doing things that end up poorly for us. Tripping on roads. Oh, indeed. Nice and hard. Let's get hard. Okay, so we were Juan. I think that might have been all we were last time. Yeah. So. Moth! We had trouble killing ourselves last time. <gasps> yeah. I, I blame Vicky for that, but. Yeah, it can also we be should my do fault. the moth in the cozy outfit. Cottagecore moth, gotcha. Hazel. Hazel! Cute. The cute. All right, so. Tunes Desert Vibes, Tropical Rave, Lo Fi Beats, or Surf Rock. I think you chose Desert Vibes last I time, did. but you also haven't heard all these other ones. So, what do you feel like? I want Surf Rock. Surf Rock, classic, just like I used to put on everything. Uh, was it the Road Jet? Okay, yeah, we know, we've seen this. Game saves checkpoints in that. Cool. Okay, what have we destroyed on ourselves so far? Well, We've last lost. time it was, was it mine? What did we destroy? We've lost our soul, I know we lost stamina. Yeah, we ran Demon. out of gas. Yeah. We lost our soul. Did we run out of money? I think it was money. I don't think we ran out of gas because that's magic. Okay. Is there a way you can check in like the pause menu or something? Nope. Show two tips. Nope. Um, you know what? We definitely haven't lost hyper magic yet, so let's go for those. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Doom's Diner, right. regular, regular motel. We have no idea what's gonna happen. True. Polly, I learned a new trick. No hands. Scott, not while you're driving. And we crash and die, and the game is over so quickly. Wait, After why is the car stopped? <laughs> After a long, exhausting day of sitting in a car, you're ready to turn in for the night. Time to choose which mundane activities to do before going to sleep. Surely Polly and Scott will find a way to make it weird. All right, of course. watch some TV, order pizza, or get ready for bed. I pizza. feel like... Yeah, I don't think we did that before, so why not? No way you're going to bed on an empty stomach. You decide to order some pizza. Trouble is, none of you know any local restaurants around here. The best way to get pizza is to call and order it. We should call a random number and see if there's pizza. Scott, the odds of calling a random phone number and actually getting a pizza restaurant are super low. So let's dial a bunch of random numbers to increase our chances. Beep, boop, beep. Hello, is this a pizza place? Okay, that sounds close enough. We'd like one large sausage and pepperoni with stuffed crust, thanks. Ooh, stuffed crust. Whoa, you actually got a pizza place on the first try? What do you think are the chances of getting another pizza place on your second try? I think we have good odds, like five out of three at least. Let's find out. Hi, is this a pizza restaurant? You specialize in pizza to die for, huh? Perfect, we'll take one. Yeah, sure, I can destroy this phone after you hang up. Bye! Polly does so. Good thing it was just the motel landline. 30 minutes later, there's not one, but two knocks at the door. I'm here to deliver one hot steaming sausage to Scott Howell, says the naked guy <laughs> with a pizza box on his crotch. Let's make that crust extra stuffed, big boy. Ooh, I got the extra piece. stuffed. I've got the pizza here for Polly Geist, says the shady guy in the trench coat. Nice suit in it, by the way. Let's make this quick. Oh boy, what a fun problem. We have two pizzas, but can only afford one. Hey, so you're good at making decisions and shit. Which pizzas should we take? The stripper's mm. extra large sausage. You suspect there's no pizza in that box, but at least you'll get a show. The shady guy's pizza. The air quotes seem sketchy, but you think the odds of actually getting a pizza from him might be better. I think we're gonna lose money like that, which we've already lost before. As much as I would love a stripper right now. Yeah. Uh, so shady guy? Probably the shady guy. Yeah. But we'll probably lose our soul. Hmm. Or 
I don't know. Or hype? I don't know, but this presents the most possibilities. You let the shady guy inside. He says, all right, let's get this over with. You give me the stuff, I'll give you the pizza. Why do you keep using air quotes like that? Because pizza is probably code for something else, like drugs or illegal ferrets. The guy undoes his trench coat and holds it out for you to see. Each pocket contains slices of pizza. Not in boxes or anything either, just loose pizza. Oh, you did have pizza. You wanted it not. Sure. <laughs> Scott tries to slice. Polly does too, because she's not entirely convinced this isn't drugs yet. It's the best pizza I've ever had. It's a secret ingredient ferrets. I never knew ferrets tasted so good. Surprisingly, there aren't any illicit substances in this. Why are you calling it pizza if it's just regular pizza? Because it isn't pizza. It's pizza. It's pizza that's so damn delicious, it can't le I can't legally call it pizza. And it isn't expensive either. The only price is me taking some pics of you eating it that I may or may not use for future blackmail material. <laughs> ah. Oh, okay. Take the photos from my left. People say it's my good side. If you upload these to the dark web, remember to tag me. There is definitely something incredibly shady about all this. You can feel it in your negative three soul. Okay, I kind of call okay. that. But hey, you got your fill of pizza, so you gained three stamina. All right, well, we've already lost soul before, so we're none the worse for wear, I guess. Probably want to get that back a little bit. We've run out of money before, so that's a no-go. <laughs> I don't know, what do you guys think? Nope. You, you know, I don't think we've seen a futuristic gas station. I don't think so. Did you remember to tip the doorman? Yeah, I gave him a tip. Be the best doorman you can be. Wow. It's a good tip. <laughs> you pull it, you know, with the sausage thing, I thought he was going, I gave him all my tip. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You, you pull into what you think is a gas station, but honestly, this could be a space station for all you know. Seriously, this place is high tech as hell. Do they even serve re service regular vehicles? Well, only one way to find out. What do you do? I want to put five bucks on meeting the interdimensional prince here. Oh, that'd be good. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. All right. Um, we don't want that because we've already done that. We don't necessarily want to gain magic right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also filling the car, man. Using the bathroom, we have no idea, so. Yep, let's try it. You hit up the restroom to do your business, but for a minute, you think you're somehow wandered into the future. Everything here is super high tech. It is as if the bathroom designers ask themselves, what could bathrooms be instead of what should bathrooms be? The commode looks like an Olympian throne designed by Alan Turing himself. You hesitantly sit on the screen that looks most like a toilet seat. Thank you for choosing Smart Toilet Prime, says the toilet. The future of shitting is now. Oh god, guys, do you know what I just thought of? How am I thousand? Everything's, everything's chrome in the future. Future. <laughs> cool. You explore the toilet's features. The lo-fi button provides a relaxing soundtrack to your poop. You press oh, the hot great. metal options and receive a delicious oh, hot meal hot option. Meal? Oh, hot meal? <laughs> I thought it could be a heated toilet seat. They they are pretty nice. That, that's actually like something that it's exists right It's the opposite right of lo-fi. Yeah, it's but hot metal. do you have one? Wow. I don't. So that's high tech. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the hot meal option receive a delicious burger. You choose not to wonder where the toilet store stores these burgers. Yeah. <laughs> I just read that as a, where'd you get those suits? The toilet store? <laughs> <laughs> this is all quite amazing. Totally worth signing a toilet term of use statement and having your personal data gathered by the toilet from your butt oh, no. to the internet. It's a bummer when, as a result, you're shown a targeted ad for hemorrhoid cream, but you still rate the toilet five stars on wealth when prompted. Finally, you pinched it off, and you're ready to leave, but only then do you realize your great mistake. This stall has no toilet paper. No, you no. check first! Hang on, come on, it might be a bidet. You desperately search the toilet for a bidet button, but no such luck. What kind of future is this? Right. There are other buttons that might help, though. Which do you pick? Please be a three seashells joke. Please be a three seashells joke. Total cleanse, because the all caps are always a good sign on a smart toilet. Mega premium, happy, happy, ass forever, magical time, because you can't not <laughs> press that button, right? <laughs> I did not get a three seashells joke, and I'm a little disappointed. So, 
So I don't know what either of these mean. Same. Total cleanse. Might rip out our soul, I don't know. Um, uh, Premium says money to me. We have more money than soul at this point, so we might as well go for that. Yeah. Your curiosity gets the better of you when you press the button. Your toilet immediately descends into the floor. You're lowered into oh. a, onto a game show set. <laughs> Your toilet is behind a colorful podium alongside other confused people also sitting on toilets. Great. Oh, oh gosh. You all owe me five bucks. <laughs> uh, you were right. Wow. I think this was Gav. Who wants it? Was. It was. Uh, Don't make me do everything. You should do everything. Yeah. You're Hello, in everyone, of the channel, and you welcome to Shittles. The game is this a good impression of Gav's impression of an interdimensional prince? Pretty good. The game yeah. show where you answer riddles while taking a shit. I'm your host, the interdimensional prince. Contestant number one is Tanner Schmidt, a construction worker hailing all the way from a porta potty in Utah. Here's your shittle, Tanner. In, if today is four days before two days after Wednesday, what day comes two days before the day which comes three days after yesterday? Oh my god. Um, what? Look, man, I was just trying to pick a thump. I need to get back to work. Wrong answer! The studio audience chants, Can! Can! Cannon. Uh -oh. Tanner gets the cannon. Just as you learn that you need to avoid losing and getting the cannon. Contestant number two is Hazel, an old friend of mine. Answer your shittle correctly, or face the cannon's wrath. No, no. What is my real name? Oh. Oh. Is it not the Interdimensional Prince? Fuck, you take a shot in the dark and say, Archibald von Hoyten III. You really think I could pull off a name, the, off the name Archibald? I'll take it. I would have also accepted my actual name, or your one true love. For your prize, you could take the free to roll of toilet paper, or you oh, could see God. what's behind door number two. Oh the, no. The curiosity is tempting, but you really need, do need to wipe your ass and get going. You take the toilet paper. Aww. And that defaults the number two prize to our last contestant, Laura Horowitz, an insurance broker who was taking a dump in her in-law's beach house. Congratulations, Laura. Your special prize is a lifetime supply of rabid weasels. Enjoy! Oh. You ascend back into your stall to the sound of a J-pop theme song, and Laura begging the weasels for mercy. You lost three money. I really money. loved his outfit. Yeah, you lost three money for choosing a premium toilet option, but gained three hype for your 15 minutes of fame on Shittles. Oh no, we didn't want okay. hype. <sighs> we can still lose our magic or mind. Okay, money and soul. Soul, money. <laughs> <laughs> we get money, but what do we sell for money? It's usually our soul. I don't know. What are we thinking? Art exhibition or charming village? Uh, village. Hmm. Okay. I love looking at the road we leave behind. Okay, but not while you're driving. You've been really into not paying attention while driving this episode. Oh, I'm getting a midsummer vibe. No. A little bit. This idyllic little village is filled with flowers, maypoles, and celebration galore. Which I means made a huge mistake. There's got to be something. No, this is going Animal Crossing, here, right? you guys. Nobody's this happy all the time. Eh, maybe you're just being paranoid. This is a chance to have fun. What do you do first? Meet Whee! the locals, join the local celebration, visit the shady landmark. Meet the locals. All right, leaving everything up to mystery. You're checking out the idyllic little neighbors in this strange village when a local family calls out to you. Uh. No one has skin. Oh. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Someone take it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Welcome to our home, outsiders. It's been so long since we've had such friendly, fleshy visitors. Will you have dinner with us? Sure. Speak for them. <laughs> I love dinner and strangers. The couple takes you to their cottage. It's filled with cute needlepoint art that says stuff like bless this mess and all hail the fleshless overlord. Wow. The potato skins are in the oven. We just love potatoes, especially when we get the, to peel their sinful flesh from their soft, delicate bodies. How shall we pass the time before dinner's, dinner's ready? Do you like games? We could play a drinking game. The last person to skin themselves alive has to take a shot. 
Uh, what? <laughs> ah, just kidding. Let's play charades. That's always fun. The wife goes first. She holds up six fingers. Then she pantomimes, scraping something off her arms and screaming in agonizing pain. Ah. I know. You're sacrificing your skin to Graphimtimate. That's one point for us! Alright, I gotta ask, why this skin fixation? It seems like something you two are really passionate about. Yes, thank you for noticing! We peeled ourselves long ago so that we could be remade under the light of Graftimet, the fleshless overlord. This might be the worst place we've gone to. Uh -huh. Thanks again. <laughs> uh -huh. It's all my fault. So where are your skins now? Did you eat them? Do you donate them to a charity for furless dogs? Oh no. We just kept them. We thought they'd come in handy someday. But really, they've just been gathering dust in the hall closet. Uh, um. <laughs> oh, could we have them? That's an odd request, but I don't see why not. Woohoo! Free skin! I can't wait to do so many things with it, like... Uh, hey, Hazel, what do you do with free skin? Uh, Use it as an <laughs> alternate, alternative option for those moments in which you don't feel comfortable in your own skin. Use it to design a sexy, fashionable outfit that redefines the notion of showing some skin. Oh, I the hate, Buffalo Bill. I hate this. Yeah. It has no good option. All right, I like the second one. <laughs> Buffalo Bill or sense of self-identity? I don't know. I feel like we're going to lose more soul with that. But we could lose That's our bad. mind by choosing to take on someone else's skin. Sure. That's true. Holly doesn't have skin, so I'm not invested. <laughs> okay, I was just going to make a mini skirt out of it and call it a skinny skirt, but that's cool. You can have your character arc. Oh, so you will wear even more skin? Double skin? Well, we're tolerant of your religious beliefs, but only if you practice them far away from us where we cannot see your disgusting ass. <laughs> Goodbye! A couple kicks you out, but it's okay because you got what you wanted. In this new skin, you're finally comfortable enough to do so many new things, like return that library book you checked out seven years ago and forgot about. You don't have to be anxious about the clerk giving you a stern look at this skin. Also, jet skiing, salsa dancing, skinny dipping, all things you've always wanted to do but never quite had the confidence to do. You're feeling so good in this skin, you decided to do something really wild. You call your dad, whose traditional upbringing left him little emotionally unavailable, and you tell him that you love him. Wow. I love you too, sport, says your dad. I don't know what's come over you recently, but I'm glad you're thriving and confident. Aw, oh, you gained three mind. And oh, mine is three mind. Okay. What happens is back a baseline for it. Because self-actualization, while nice, is admittedly a little corny and lame. Wow. Not going as well as we would have hoped out the gate. A gift shop or the Wild West town. I think I should not pick. Okay, what's the odds of another midsummer thing? Who knows? I kind of like Wild West Town. That's the first time I've actually spoken up, so. All right. Sure. That village was nice. Let's get a house there, Polly. Ugh, pass. Welcome to the land of six shooters, outlaws, wild stallions, wild stallions, <laughs> and ten gallon hats. You've always wanted to be a real cowboy, oh, or at least oh. the kind of cowboy they show on TV, and now's your chance. So, what are you gonna do, partner? Duel at Dude. high noon. Visit the saloon, visit the horses. We could lose. Horsey. We could lose a lot. That's fine. You decide to visit the horse stables. You're always down to see the cute animals and indulge your inner horse girl. Look, Polly, this one likes me. You can see in her eyes that he really loves my head pads. Totally. You can always tell what a horse is thinking when you look into its eyes. They're the big derpy windows into its soul. Like, I can tell this one really wants a bite of my pocket. Do you smell the ketamine cookies in there, big guy? What is your horse thinking, Hazel? <laughs> <laughs> you look into the eyes of the horse you're petting. At first you don't see anything, so you really squint, and then 
You can envision the horse's wants, its desires, the things it craves most in the world, and it craves violence, arson, bloodshed. So much bloodshed. Do it, so the horse says with its eyes, burn down the world. Commit tax fraud. It is your destiny. Now we already did the tax evasion thing. Well, what's your horse saying, Brim? Why are you still standing there, the horse's eyes, dumb man? Why haven't you committed tax fraud yet? As to your horse overlord, I command you. What's wrong, Hazel? You wouldn't deny this adorable horsey its sweet, innocent desires by staying silent, will you? Crap. Oh. I don't want to let your friends down, but does that mean you need to do the horse's bidding? You decide to. Chalk up the horse's disturbing demands to your own weird, intrusive thoughts and just pat its dumb head. Do the horse's bidding. Or pledge yourself to your new horse overlord and do whatever he demands until the day end of your days. I feel like we'd lose our mind. Can we lose magic like or height? Can we lose our our hyper magic first from one of these? I don't know. We might lose height from that. What do we lose from you from doing the whole, probably Solian, which we want to avoid. You know what? I like the extreme options. If we lose our mind, it'll be a lot of mind. Fuck it, you hated being in charge of your own life and decisions anyway. Might as well turn over your autonomy to a fucking horse. No, wor no words are spoken, but the covenant is complete. You stare into its eyes and sign your mind, body, and soul over to this horse. If this is soul, son of a bitch. Uh, Polly, does Hazel seem like a husk of their former self to you? Nah, they're always making that face. They probably just did something huge to make that horse happy. Good job, boo. You go about your life pretty much as normal after that, but every, every once in a while you pass a stranger in the street and their eyes are as empty and soulless as your own. This is comforting in a way. It's good to know who your allies are in the hive mind, of course. We definitely oh, lost soul. Ah. That's the additions, but we're going to lose four of something. Yeah. The horse rewards you for your loyalty, of course, being in it for in its fold grants you two height, one money, one magic via Those its lucrative arcane soul. powers. But, what do we lose? But you also have to commit several atrocities on the horse's behalf, theft, so arson, tax, fraud, stabbing so. yourself in the leg for the laughs, your new life of horse crime, two mind and oh, two soul. Okay. Okay, so we did lose okay. some mind with it. It's not as much as I wanted. Damn. <sighs> really screwing it up. As much as I would like to use a hitchhiker right now, should we go for something that could definitely just drop us? Yeah. Because we're not in a good position to begin with. I want to do a flat chat. Available by invitation only. Someone be oh. the voice of this thing. But I didn't receive an invitation. Eh, who cares really? Anyway, it's just something already. Okay. okay. Money, stamina, hype? That, how to road trip book. Mind? Maybe? Hmm. I'm gonna go with this. Um, We need some soul. Do we have any nuclear launch codes? Need Unicorn needs a good film. That's magic, 100%. That's magic. Treasure map is probably money. We are a little low on money. An incredibly delicious salad. That would be stamina. We don't need as much stamina. We're good on that. <laughs> Look at his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> He's sweating. Stop. We'll, we'll grab some money. All right. We've lost some mind. So far, so good. Great choice. Thanks for stopping by. And remember, if I see you reselling any of my products online, I'm not afraid to go back to jail. Uh, he drew his eyebrows on with Sharpie. My Noodles is the most unhinged character, I think, in this entire game. I love him. <laughs> I don't think any of these characters have any hinges. All right, we nope. two, and we're trying to lose our mind. I think we'll have to come back next time to see how this all goes. See you guys then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, and feel free to check out some of our other gaming videos, our weekly podcast, Anime Yay or Nay, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time!